Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Today we're going to talk about ultrasound during pregnancy. Ultrasound is a technology that uses sound waves of the frequency so high that they can't be heard by humans in order to make an image. And I'll spare you all the details of how it exactly works because it's not really very important for what we're going to talk about here. Ultrasound is used for many purposes, one of which is during pregnancy in order to determine things like the approximate due date, chromosomal abnormalities, detect multiple births, track the development of the fetus, uh, determine the sex, assess um, amniotic fluid levels, and many other things. The average number of ultrasounds performed during the pregnancy in the United States is between 10 and 17. Low-risk women get an average of 5.2 ultrasounds per pregnancy, while high-risk uh, patients often have an ultrasound at every single doctor visit. The use of routine ultrasound, also known as sonogram, is increased based on the belief that early detection of problems leads to better outcomes. This may sound like a very similar to other things I talk about all the time, the belief that early detection is better, but it's not necessarily true. There is scant evidence that ultrasounds are accurate and some evidence that they may do more harm than good. Some organizations use doctors to use caution concerning the routine use of ultrasound. According to the American Pregnancy Association, quote, the long-term effects of repeated ultrasound exposures on the fetus are not fully known. It is recommended that ultrasound only be used if medically indicated. In 2014, the American College of Radiology advised that ultrasound, quote, should only be performed when there's valid medical indication and the lowest ultrasonic exposure setting should be used to gain the necessary diagnostic information under the, quote, as low as reasonably achievable principle. The American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists advises on its website that women may have at least one standard ultrasound between 16 and 20 weeks of pregnancy, but then goes on to say, ultrasound quote should be used prudently and only when it is expected to answer a clinical question or otherwise provide medical benefit to the patient. In summary, while most organizations will insist that ultrasound is safe, most also insist that it should only be used when necessary. There are most likely two reasons for this. One is that long-term studies comparing children whose mothers did and did not have ultrasound or comparing mothers who had one scan versus several, counts, uh, uh, several ultrasounds have never been done. The other is that there are some published studies showing that low-intensity ultrasound does have an effect on physiology. It's been found to upregulate endothelial growth factor, promote angiogenesis, and increase blood flow in animal studies, accelerate fracture, hearing, uh, fracture healing, I should say, in humans, and to alter mood in humans. Now, clearly, ultrasound has multiple effects on living things, but the medical profession has adopted routine ultrasound for pregnant women before knowing what the effects might be on a fetus. In spite of this, it's considered the standard of care to have routine ultrasound in uncomplicated pregnancies, even if it is not needed to determine the approximate date of delivery. Ultrasound is used to detect abnormalities and birth defects, even though the test has a very poor accuracy rate of only 24.1%. Ultrasound also does not deliver the risk reduction promised by many health professionals. According to a Cochrane review, ultrasound did not revert, re reduce adverse outcomes for infants or lead to less medical services for mothers or their babies. A study including over 15,000 pregnant women showed absolutely no difference in outcomes between pregnant women who received two scans versus women who received scans when medically necessary. Ultrasound did not reduce perinatal morbidity or mortality, preterm delivery, or outcomes, with women with, uh, outcomes of women with multiple babies, small for gestational infants, and post-date pregnancies. The detection of major abnormal anomalies did not alter outcomes. Also, uh, ultrasound also made no difference, even in high-risk subgroups, in terms of reducing frequency of adverse outcomes. This study that I'm talking about right here was published in 1993 and stated that the cost of routine ultrasound is, is if, if it was adopted as a standard practice and applied to four million pregnant women per year, uh, per year would increase costs by over a billion dollars without improving outcomes at all. Ultrasound does appear to increase risks in a dose-dependent manner. A study of 2,934 women who were pregnant concluded that women who had five ultrasounds were more likely to have intrauterine growth restriction or abnormal fetal development than those women who had only one scan at 18 weeks. Now this is where things get really interesting. 
in an editorial that was titled, Obstetric Sonography, The Best Way to Terrify a Pregnant Woman. Roy Philly, a medical doctor who performed some of the first ultrasounds ever, expresses concern about the procedure. I really think it would be doing a disservice to this very long editorial, which I ex excerpted some things from, uh, to paraphrase. So I'm going to read you a couple of paragraphs because I think what Dr. Philly has to say is very important. He says, the opportunity to say everything looks fine to an expectant mother was one of the perks of my job. I can see the wave of relief wash across her face. It's always a touching moment, followed by thank you, doctor. Today I no longer feel that way. There are a growing number of patients where I dread having to speak with her. I have reviewed the sonographer's scans and they disclose a finding that will send the mother into a tailspin of confusion and worry. Tomorrow when I return to work, the odds are I will have to speak to a mother-to-be about an abnormality that I see on her sonogram and I don't, won't know what to tell her. What Dr. Philly is referring to is abnormalities associated with trisomy, trisomy syndromes, genetic defects in which there are three copies of a chromosome instead of two. While most people are familiar with one of these, which is one of the abnormalities, which is Down syndrome, there are many others. And the others, such as bright spots in the heart or intestines, are common in normal fetuses. Dr. Philly says that about 10% of normal fetuses will have at least one of these abnormalities. So what this means is that if ultrasound is uh, done on all pregnant women, there will be considerable overdiagnosis and literally thousands and thousands of really frightened prospective parents. For every hundred fetuses in which there are abnormalities, three will have trisomy and the other 97 will be overdiagnosed with an abnormality that is essentially meaningless. But all 100 of these moms will likely have more testing including amniocentesis, and this increases the risk of miscarriage. Dr. Philly goes on to write in his editorial, without a doubt, you have added to the cost of the management of that pregnancy. The patient may choose to undergo amniocentesis. She may be referred to a prenatal diagnostic center for a detailed fetal sonogram and genetic counseling. The innumerable hours of counseling by private caregivers and general sonologists to explain the meaning of these findings are not counted in these additional costs nor are the heartaches of the parents-to-be counted in this cost analysis. If they forego amniocentesis, clearly the correct choice in my opinion, then they must live with the residual doubt for the remainder of the pregnancy. Does my fetus have Down syndrome? Maybe I should have had the amniocentesis. The enjoyment of the anticipation of the birth or their son or daughter is now replaced with anxiety. Well, you say, look at all the good these findings have accomplished. Some bad must go along with that good. Philly goes on to say, possibly I'm the exception, I doubt it, but I don't see all the good. I'm a simple-minded physician. From my vantage point, the identification of these abnormalities in low-risk women has crossed the line of more harm than good. Now, others agree with Dr. Philly. It's not great technology, says Jessica Goldstein, a medical doctor and family practice uh, physician in Salinas, California. She tells her patients they do not need to have any ultrasounds during pregnancy. She says, in general, it misses a lot of abnormalities. It also picks up abnormalities that are not real abnormalities. Indeed, a review of 56 studies showed that the results of ultrasound with regard to trisomy were not reliable, and the use of routine ultrasound to screen for Down syndrome would result in more miscarriages than diagnoses. The bottom line is that ultrasound is presented to prospective parents as a low-risk standard of care test that provides valuable information in order that parents can be proactive. I have never met a pregnant woman who has been told that the test has limited efficacy and more chance of harm than benefit. The use of ultrasound is particularly irresponsible since abnormalities can lead some parents to elect abortion rather than carrying a baby to full term. And this happened in a family of a, a friends of mine where um, one of my best friend's daughter was pregnant. Um, this was a pregnancy that had been worked very hard for her to get pregnant, and, and she and her husband were looking forward to this baby. Uh, they were told by the uh, doctor after an ultrasound that the baby had Down syndrome. There was a lot of gut-wrenching discussion and crying and tears about whether to keep the baby. Um, because of a fundamental difficulty with abortion, she decided to keep the baby, and he was born just fine. So I have seen the misery that this all brings about in my own life and with people who are very, very close to me. Um, so I don't think we can ever quantify the unnecessary abortions which have been performed by mothers who really wanted to have a baby 
but didn't want the responsibility of caring for a special needs child. So my concluding comment really is that more caution is needed in deciding whether or not to have an ultrasound, and I think all parents should have access to this information before deciding. One last thing that I'll say is I'm certainly not suggesting here that ultrasound is always a bad idea. I'm suggesting that the use of ultrasound uh, as a routine procedure and the overuse of ultrasound is the problem. And it is a continuing theme in medicine. We always think more is better, more knowledge is better, more tests are better, more procedures are better. And I think we've got to stop treating pregnancy like a disease that requires intervention. So more caution in reference to ultrasound. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody else who you think would enjoy watching it. I will be back to you on uh, next week with more news.